Okay, uh, this video is a continuation of the work we started in part three, um, where we did the uh, sketch of uh, A and B. Um, so this time we're going to continue with C and D. Um, if you're watching this and you haven't seen our part three, uh, please do so. Uh, um, then this is going to make much more sense. Right, so in C we've got uh, 2x cubed plus 9x squared minus 4. So in C we have got uh, um, y equal 2x cubed 9x squared minus 4. So as before, we're going to start by finding the first uh, and the second order derivatives. First order derivative is... Uh, 6x squared second order derivative is going to be 18x then the second order derivative uh, what did i say there first order derivative is 6x squared plus 18x then the second order derivative is going to be 12x plus 18 and then the uh, stationary points we find by equating the first order derivative to zero and solving. So if we do that here, the common factor is uh, 6x. So this is going to be 6x into x plus 3. So that tells us that uh, there are two stationary points. One of them is at zero. When x is 0, y is just going to be the constant in the y equation, which is negative 4. So that means our stationary point is at 0, negative 4. Is it a maximum, relative maximum, or relative minimum? That information we can get from the second order derivative. So if you plug in 0 there, we're going to have 12 times 0 plus 18 so this is concave up so this is a relative minimum or local minimum 0 negative 4 is a local minimum then the other stationary point from this is going to be at x equal to negative 3 now if we plug in negative 3 um, if we plug in negative 3 in the equation for y so we're going to have 2 times negative 3 cubed plus 9 times negative 3 squared minus 4 this works out to 23 so this is telling us that uh, negative 3, 23 is a stationary point. Is it a local maximum or a local minimum? That information again we get from the second order derivative. So this time we're going to have 12 times negative 3 plus 18. It's going to be 18 minus 36. This is negative 18. So this is telling us that uh, the graph at this point is concave down because the second order derivative is negative. So the implication is that 323 is a local maximum. Then the y-intercept is 0, negative 4 actually. So 0, negative 4 is both a y-intercept and a local minimum. So from this we can now make a sketch of this graph. Um, so 0, negative 4 is on the vertical axis below the origin, so somewhere there. Uh, now the analysis is telling us that 0, negative 4 is concave up. So that means the graph 
is looking something like this at that point. And then negative 323 is in the second quadrant. So that means somewhere there, the graph is going to be looking like this. Now, if we join those two, this is suggesting that uh, the general shape of the graph is going to be somewhat like that. This is 0, negative 4. This is uh, 3, neg negative 3, 23. Okay. Um, then, if we take the first order derivative and equate it to 0, we should be able to find our inflection point, which should be in that region there. So let's see. Um, um, so second order derivative is uh, 12x plus 18. So 12x plus 18 equal to 0. If we solve this, we get negative 3 over 2. So that means the x coordinate of the inflection point is negative 3 over 2. The y coordinate uh, we can find by plugging negative 2, negative 3 over 2 into the y equation is going to be cubed there. And then that's going to be squared minus 4. This works out to 19 over 2. So that tells us that uh, negative 3 over 2, 19 over 2 is an inflection point. Um, this point is, of course, in the second quadrant, as our sketch is suggesting. 3 over 2, 19 over 2. Uh, if we check this against uh, the idea that we mentioned in part 3, that the coordinates of this are the average of these two, you should find that this checks out. Um, and then, in terms of regions of concavity, we can see that uh, uh, on the left-hand side of 3, the graph is concave down. And then on the right-hand side, sort of negative 3, graph is concave up. So we're going to say concave up over so the right hand side of negative 3 is x greater than negative 3 then concave down over x is less than negative 3 regions of increase it's increasing um, on the left hand side of negative 3 and on the right hand side of zero. So increasing over, uh, sorry, this is negative three over two, not uh, negative three. So increasing on the left hand side of negative three and on the right hand side of zero and then decreasing um, between negative 3, x is negative 3, and x is 0. Okay, so that sorts out uh, part um, C. Uh, again, I'm going to give you a moment. Just want to pause the video and have a go at uh, part D then when you continue the video you'll find our solution all right uh, we now look at our solution for part d so the derivative is going to be 15 minus 12 x minus 3 x squared second order derivative is going to be minus 12 minus 6 x for the stationary points we take the first order derivative 
equated to 0 and solve. In our case, we're going to get x equals to 1 and x equals to negative 5. When x is 1, plugging into the y equation, we find that y is 17. So our stationary point is 117. When you plug in y in the second order derivative, we get a negative. Negative second order derivative means concave down. It means 117 is a local maximum. Then for x is negative 5, we find that y is negative 91. Plugging in the second order derivative, we find positive 18. So this is concave up because this is positive. So negative 5, negative 91 is a local minimum. The y-intercept is 0, 9. So this is telling us that the shape of the graph is going to look something like this. This we um, get from these two. So for instance, if you take negative 5, negative 91, we have got uh, this shape here. And then if you take 117, we have got... Uh, um, that shape there so joining these two uh, of course we also have that the y-intercept is 0, 9 gives us this shape and then from this we can sort out um, that there's going to be y1 <coughs> inflection point because it's concave down this side and up this side so we take the second order derivative and solve, we get negative 2. The y coordinate is negative 37. So that is going to be our inflection point. And then on the left hand side of that point, we have got concave up. The right hand side, we've got concave down. And then on the left hand side of negative 5, the graph is decreasing left hand side which is this one then on the right hand side of one the dark graph is decreasing and then it's only increasing in between the two stationary points all right uh brings us to the end of this uh which has hopefully been very useful please do remember to subscribe and uh, put your comments at the bottom, like the video, etc. Thank you.